So, Chris, this is another one of those challenges we mentioned, and it's a challenge that's been forced on the promotion. Ishmael James, his opponent, pulled out. Two days' notice, Joey Taroni takes the bout. But Joey Taroni has fought at professional level, and he's agreed to fight under amateur rules. So Ishmael, in a way, is up against a very experienced fighter who's actually fought in Thailand. So if he's fighting in Thailand, it has to be A-class rules. We talked about Cruz Sam and the way he puts his fighters through challenges. Ishmael James is facing one of those challenges. That's right. Ishmael James out of the red corner. Taroni out of the blue. Taroni having fought in Thailand. Actually has three A-class fights on his ledger. So looked really, really calm, relaxed coming in here tonight in the zone. But the word on the street is that Ishmael James has a couple of things that he believes may be able to be the difference tonight. Going out there against a real tough guy was everything he wanted. So all about the journey, he said, no problem, no fear with a late and last minute opponent swap. Well, it was, um, Joey Taroni was saying, he was he was quite open about it, you know, said, what sort of camp are you at? I haven't had a camp, I've taken this at two fights notice, but I'm experienced, I'm happy to do it. Y you know, he's seeing this as an experience. And he said one of the great strengths about the whole team, Kenshiro, as we mentioned, Team Kenshiro before, is nobody's allowed to quit. He said, we won't quit, we're not allowed to quit. Taroni, just uh, 19 years of age, 5 foot 11, actually uh, went to live in Thailand to take up Muay Thai. A few fights, uh, he was a fan after watching, got into training, and wants to become big in the sport. And he looks calm, and he's in there dancing, having a good time, warmed up. Well, the thing is, Chris, as you and I know, there is no pressure on you as a late replacement. And he's having a bit of a dance-off here with our referee, Pete Richardson. And I've seen Pete's moves before. He's a great twerker as well, Chris. So, you know, if Joey might win the, the fight, but I'd have my money on Pete Richardson if they're going to go on a dance-off together. Now, Ishmael James is coming back with his box. Um, I spoke to Pete Richardson. He said, we're just waiting for Ishmael's box. But the thing is, there's no pressure on Joey. He's taken this at the last minute. Yes, he's professional. He's had the bouts in Thailand. He's going to fight under amateur rules, but he's coming at two days' notice to make sure that Ishmael's training doesn't go out the window. So in, the, in, in certain respects, there's a freedom there for him, isn't there? And Joey was adamant to us that he believes he is the future. He said, watch out, you'll see. I haven't got much else to say. Chok D. Well, the thing is, he's got a distinct height advantage over Ishmael. He's got an experience advantage as well. So three two-minute rounds, Pete Richardson in charge. Next generation combat number three. Privileged to be with you, Chris Hookstra on the call, alongside my partner as always, Malcolm Martin. Ishmael on the blue. Joey in the red. It's great, you know, Joey Taroni. It's, it, you know, if this was in the Bronx, it'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Imagine the commentary there. But it's not. It's we're in Korea. Clashy kicks. We're underway. Double jab there from Ishmael. Ishmael James looking to mix things up early on the feet now. And I think it's right, Chris. He's got to go in there and unsettle Joey. He's, he's got a dis distinct height disadvantage, so you need to be either right in or right out, and you need to do it quickly. Very solid hand fighting there from Chironi. Batting away that kick. 
but not breaking stance either. I mean, he's really kept disciplined about it. He's in position continually. And for me, that's one of the things that you often see from such a disciplined guy. I mean, he's not worried there. He's covering up, he's backing up. A lesser, more experienced fighter will be flinching, and Tyrone just seems to have a lot of composure at just 19. Well, the thing is, we talked about his advantages here, the, the, you know, the A-class fighting in Thailand, the experience, the professional experience. But let's look if, if we're on the other side of the coin for Ishmael. He's had a full training camp. He's trained hard. He's fit. He's really in peak condition. And I think he needs to press the pace because Joey's admitted he didn't have a fight camp. He's taken this. I mean, a lot of fighters are always fit, but you know fight camp fits are different things. So if I was Ishmael, there would be my key to really try and force this pace as fast as possible to say, Joey, you haven't had a camp. You're not fight fit. And you also have to ask yourself about the differences in game planning, which when we talked to the KO Next Generation crew earlier tonight, they weren't too concerned about. They said, look, what we do is we go in there and we take a look at what they're going to do and we find holes. That's what we train for. So it doesn't matter who we step up against. What matters is how we go about finding the weak points. So a real tough test and prospect here for Ishmael James, working into the clinch very nicely. Body lock there, good solid grip. Those KO guys always good in close, Malcolm. Well, the thing was, there was a nice jumping knee in there from Joey as well, but I think Ishmael's doing the right thing. Whenever they break ground, he tries to work in behind. Oh, beautifully timed dump there from Ishmael. So I was just about to say that he tries to work in very nicely behind solid boxing against the taller opponent. And I think tactically he's doing the right thing. He's trying to force the pace with Joey, trying to get in there fast and trying to exploit the fact the man hasn't trained properly for this bout. And looking at some of that action replay there on the monitor, you can see that really what you were talking about, Malcolm, the game plan of getting in there, getting in your guy's face, making him work, making him feel, making him know you're there. And that to me was one of the things Ishmael James did very well there in that first stanza. Well, it's an interesting matchup, Chris, as I said, because experience is one thing and professional experience is another thing. But having a full fight camp, having that full training, all the sparring, and there's a, as I said, there's a big difference between being fit, which Joey will obviously be, and being fight fit. Touch of gloves, round two. This one bubbling very nicely here. Ishmael James again pushing forward, trying to get that tie up, Malcolm. Let's see what he can do with it. And he did so again with the fast hands, Chris. He, what I do like about Ishmael is he closes the gap quickly. When he decides to go in, he goes in quickly, uses the hands, and then ties up into the clinch. Now, I think Joey works well in the clinch as well, as you'd expect with that experience. But everything tactically that he's doing so far, Ishmael is, is doing right. Nice knee there to the inside thigh. Good connections there from Tironi. Well, that's what I said to you, Chris. He, he works well on the clinch equally with Ishmael James. And as you said, I think you mentioned before, he looks comfortable. The problem is, though, there could be a difference in being comfortable and not winning the points exchanges. That's a good point indeed. And this is where I think Ishmael's eye-catching, isn't he? He's constantly pushing forward. He's constantly working hard, constantly using those hands over the top. I'd like to see Joey use that height advantage, get that teep going, and then off the teep, maybe the big roundhouse. Nice tie up there. Ishmael James taking the back and then hitting upstairs on the exit. He's the more creative guy right now. I think he's also the more unpredictable fighter, and that might be the difference. Great exchanges here. I'm really impressed with the composure, especially given kind of the uh, underdog status, as it were, for Ishmael James. Well, as I said, I, I don't want to harp on the matter, but I think we're seeing from Joey here a man who hasn't had a camp, who hasn't had that real intense training for tonight's show. Nice knee there. Oh, he thought about throwing the elbow. <laughs> he didn't Peter think about Richardson. it. He threw it, Chris. You well spotted there. But Ishmael saying, I'm absolutely fine. But there's, there's that experience. Chris Hoekstra seeing that immediately. It was the downward elbow when he's not allowed to use the elbow. And again, you can't really blame him. As we said, he's, he's going under amateur rules as a professional where it would have been legal. But he's dropped the point there, Chris, which is vital. That was massive. That was massive. Looking at the clock right now, you know, 10 seconds to go. 
he could be up two rounds, and for me, that would be kind of uh, the nail in the coffin, as it were. Two in the books. Malcolm, how do you got it so far? I think, Chris, what was vital there was the fact that the count came in. I think you're right. Ishmael was doing the right thing. He was testing Joey and testing his fitness and his fight fitness, pushing the pace, and I think that's why Joey reacted with the elbow. When you're under pressure, you revert to type. A-class rules, professional rules, came in, under pressure, bang. And as you said, I think there was a case for Ishmael winning the rounds anyway. When you make that 10-8, it's a huge ass for Joey in the third round. You bet. So taking a look at kind of how things might go, could be 2017 at this point. What do you do if you're in the corner then of Joey Tironi? Obviously, you've got great fundamentals. I mean, he's got great footwork. He's disciplined. He clearly knows the game. How does he go out there and take out a guy like Ishmael James? Look, Ishmael's coming in quickly. He's coming in quickly with high hands, but he's coming in in straight line. Hit him with that teep. Take him off balance. Boom in the roundhouse. Bring it in. Use that range to your advantage now. The cardio's there for Ishmael. We understand that. Joey's taking this on two days' notice. But Ishmael will always be there in front of you. Well, right on cue, the first strike there from Joey Tironi is a right roundhouse kick. Be difficult to see whether or not he tries to set it up or go right back into the clinch. I feel like the clinch maybe isn't the smartest thing at this point because his reach and his technique while standing tall and long might be his ace. You're right, Chris. I mean, they're very even in the clinch, so he does well in the clinch, but so does Ishmael. I want to pick up on that previous point. For me, that is all about the range of Joey Tironi using those long limbs and especially also knowing that Ishmael comes in on those straight lines. So a separation here, Pete Richardson telling both fighters to continue to work with purpose. Good roundhouse there. Well, Tironi's looking to counter Ishmael as he comes in now and the one thing that he does know is where Ishmael's going to be. And then it's just about timing. Nice knee there, though. That was a really good knee. Ishmael felt that. When he comes in straight like that and very predictably, you've got to do things to make him back off and respect. Or rather, on the inverse, not disrespect you by coming in and sort of engaging recklessly like that. Again, stutter step, very nice. This is more technical there from Joey. It's been Joey's best round, Chris. I've got to be honest. I think he's doing the right tactics here. And what he's doing is using the straight line approach of Ishmael and then using his own timing to catch him on the way in there. Short knees here. Ishmael James hanging on Joey Tironi. Might be a smart thing at this point, though. You might as well buy time. You're up on the points, more than likely. I mean, clearly they believe they're up on points, otherwise they wouldn't be advising their fighter to do this. And with that 10-second timer, the other thing, picking up on what you've said, is the fact that Joey was doing well in this round at range, and Ishmael, I think, did the right thing by cutting that down. So three in the books here. Next Generation Combat bringing you the very best in amateur action on the road to the main card. To all of you tuning in here, we are now on fight. Great to have you. Thank you very much for tuning in. James and Tironi go the distance. Malcolm, here's how they did at the tail of the tape. Well, I think Tironi, the third, was his best round. But I still think across the three, especially with that count, Ishmael James is going to take this. And it'll be a scalp. I, I said all credit to Joey taking this at just two days' notice. But the lack of a proper fight camp and being fight fit rather than just a fit athlete will have told across these three rounds. And I'll be very surprised if the red corner doesn't take this.